morning. morning. You guys doing right this morning? <clears throat> it's been quiet. You guys are processing the video, right? It hit me in the feels, right? Uh, man, we're so excited that you guys are here today. I know I've said that. It's because I really mean it. And I'll probably say it again a few more times. But we are uh, so excited that you're here today. I am uh, I'm ready to share God's word. But you have stuff that I'm ready to, to encourage some people in the room today. Anybody, anybody need that right now uh, with everything that's going on? Uh, in, in your life. Hey, we've been in a series called Rise Up, uh, just a call uh, for the church and for all of us just to, to rise up in this time, in this season, in this hour that we are in, to rise up and be the church that he is calling us uh, to be. We talked about going all in. The world needs a church that's all in. The, the world needs a church that's not playing games, not playing religion, not being fake and phony. The world needs an authentic church sharing the, the real Jesus. Uh, out to the world. Amen. And so we talked about that. We talked about prayer uh, and how important prayer is. And I know that's so Sunday schoolish, but many of us don't do it the way that we should or, or even at all. And, and man, it's so powerful. Prayer is powerful. Anybody believe that this morning? It, it is so powerful. And we need to pray because life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your family's life depends on it. Your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, the world uh, depends on it. And then last week we talked about a rise up and reach out. The world needs to see Jesus in you. Uh, we need to reach out and, and reach those around us. And today I want to talk about reclaim your calling. Reclaim your calling. Your calling isn't as much about what you're doing in life, but what you are becoming. We are called to become followers of Christ. And I fear that so many times we box in that word calling and we, we say those words like purpose and God has a purpose and plan for your life. The purpose for us is to simply follow after him. To love him and to love others and then obey him as he tells us what to do along the way. So many of us are looking for a big neon sign that says, I want you to do this right here. Or a big arrow that says, hey, right here, go here. Is what but, 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 but so many of us chase that more than we chase after God. Right? And so, so, we, so we lose it in the midst of all that. God just simply wants us to run after him and to follow him, to love him, to serve him, and to trust him with our lives. So I want to talk through that with you uh, some today. In fact, you can turn uh, to Ephesians chapter 4. We'll start in verse 1. Actually, we're only going to look at that one verse and, and then kind of uh, bring some other verses in around that. But, but Ephesians chapter 4, um, verse 1. As you're turning there, um, have you ever felt like what you do doesn't matter very much? Right? If we're all honest, we've been there at some point in our life. Maybe you're that way today. You feel like, man, is this it? Right? Anybody ever feel like that before? It, it, like, there's got to be more. You feel like, I, what I'm doing, I don't feel like there's much purpose in it. Or it, it maybe you're feeling that tension. I'd say, maybe you feel that way as a spouse. Maybe you feel that way as a husband or a wife. Maybe you feel like sometimes, is this it, right? Maybe, maybe you don't see the purpose at times in, or the purpose that God has for you. Maybe you feel that way as a parent sometimes. And you're, and you're, you're trying to parent, you're trying to do the best you can, and sometimes it feels like you take two steps forward and ten steps back. And we'll start singing Paul Abdul here in a minute, but um, some of y'all remember that song. But yeah, sometimes you feel like you're making progress, and then, and then it's like, what? The, the, the kids are different kids the next day. Anybody feel me? Like, maybe, especially now that they're home so much. We love you, kids, in the room. I'm not knocking you. But it feels that way sometimes. Sometimes we feel like we can really be failing it as parents, and sometimes it's hard to see. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the purpose in it. Sometimes. Maybe you feel that way on your particular job. Maybe you feel like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just earning a paycheck. I'm just trying to make things meet. But you don't feel fulfilled in that. You don't see the purpose in that. It was the particular season that you were in, and you feel like, man, I'm not feeling, not feeling this right now. There's got to be something more. Is there a tension there for you in that today? I want to encourage you in this. Check this out. God can do anything with anything. Come on, you believe that today? God can do anything with anything. So no matter what you are going through right now, no matter how you are feeling, no matter what you have experienced or are you are experiencing uh, right now, maybe this is a difficult season with all the things that are going on. 2020 is just, it's, uh, let's just go, right? It's been with it. And now we got two hurricanes. I told Haley, I told her two weeks. I said, wouldn't it be crazy if two hurricanes just collided together? And, I, and she's like, no. I called yesterday. Happened. 2020's been a crazy year, right? You know, there's, 
really expected this or, or saw this. But God can do anything with anything. Come on. In his omnipotence, in his omniscience, in his transcendence. And all those are just fancy words for God is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is above all things. In all that, he created everything out of nothing. Right? He simply spoke, let there be light, and there was light. And he simply said, hey, I want, he pulled a Bob Ross. I want a little tree right here. Right? Y'all remember Bob Ross, the painting? I just want a little happy tree right here. And he said, I want a little happy person right here. He created Adam and Eve. I can do anything with anything. He created the world with just his word. Right? I can do, in your situation that you're in right now, or you may face someday, I can do anything with anything. You, you, you might feel like, well, I, I, don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. I can do anything with anything. Come on. I want to encourage you in that today. God can do anything in your life as you follow Him. You're shaped for God's purpose. We are here on this earth on purpose, for purpose, for His purpose. Amen? Everything that we do should be for God's glory, whether it's being a parent, being a spouse, being a student, uh, whatever job that you have, you might feel like I'm just working for the man, I'm just trying to clog out everybody's working for the weekend, right? I'm just, but, but, but your job can be as unto the Lord, no matter what it is, right? Our calling is not limited to something specific or a specific title. Our calling is to just love God and to love others. That's it. Whatever he says to do in the middle of all that, we just say, yes, Lord, send me. You are shaped for God's purpose. So whatever uh, season you're in, whoever you are, whatever it is that you do, whatever you've been through, you have a purpose. You have a calling as a follower of Christ. And in that, guess what? You are called. You are called to follow him. Jesus told uh, the disciples, hey, come follow me. And he says that to us today. We, we often use the, the phrase, we want you to accept Jesus into your heart. I feel like we've done it this service to many people by saying that because that, that's just figurative. What we really need to say is, hey, why don't you follow Jesus? Because that's really what that means. And there's a call to follow him. So you are called, you are chosen through the, through the, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are chosen. Anyone that would choose him. You are gifted. There are things that, that God has given you. There are natural giftings that you have. Inside. There's, I believe there's some seeds that are laying dormant in this room right now. You have not even experienced or have been exposed to you yet. You are gifted. You are chosen. And you are called. Man, I love these shaped toys that, that the kids have. And they're super little. Right? These are amazing. Right? You might play with these you know, when you're a kid. Right? Maybe you've had kids, parents, you've had kids that were super little, and, and they have these toys, right? And these are great for, uh, what are they called? Fine motor skills, right? And fine motor skills, right? And, and so they'll take shapes and, uh, and they'll put them in. But, but how many of you have seen your kids do this, right? Like the good story. And then they get mad and they throw them everywhere, right? I mean, you've seen, you've seen your kids do that, right? It never fails. They'll try to take the shape. The shape a particular way and fit it into something that it doesn't fit in. Right? <clears throat> Don't we do that sometimes in our lives as adults? Man, if I could, if I could just get that promotion, if I could just work extra 10 hours this week, <clears throat> and, and, and then I get that promotion, and then I get that paycheck, Joe, and then, and then man, I would be much happier. If I could just meet that right person, have you seen her? Have you ever seen her? If I could just meet that person, I won't have to go on farmersonly.com anymore, right? You don't have to be going on farmersonly.com. Now, if you online date, man, you do you, boo. Like, I'm not even hating. I'm not, I'm not, it's just a joke. Hey, don't be offended. Right. Forgive me. But yeah, if I just find the right person, God, if you could just tell me all the details and lay that out for me, that would be awesome, right? 
And we do that. We try to, to shape ourselves and fit ourselves into something that we were never meant to. We were meant to be molded and shaken into the image of Christ. And that only happens as we follow him. But far too often we get this mindset that, hey, everybody says God has a plan and a purpose for my life. And so I'm going to run after that. And it's easy. I even do this as a pastor. I'll just be super honest. I'll tell on myself a little bit. There's some times I get ahead of myself and I forget that ministry is for God, by God, right? And sometimes I can get ahead of myself and I gotta pump the brakes and hold up, God, I, I left you back there. Way a few mile markers back. Okay? And, and if we're not careful, we can do that a lot because we're chasing after this or that. And we're trying to fit our life into something that it wasn't meant to be. Our purpose and our calling is simply to follow after him. God shaped our lives with a purpose in mind. And if we'll just answer that call, we simply follow him, trust him, obey him. Guess what? He's going to open the windows of heaven in your life. He's going to reveal things to you that you never could have imagined. Revival will happen in your life. If you'll just focus on him and follow him and obey him, you will hear from him. He will speak to you. You'll know your purpose. You'll know exactly what to do because you're walking in step with him. Our purpose is not just something specific, but it's in him and who he wants us to become. Ephesians chapter 4, I told you to turn there, hope you have it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Paul is writing this letter to the church of Ephesus. Paul was this awesome dude. I mean, the life that he led, and we're going to talk a lot about Paul today, but he wore many hats. I mean, he was a missionary, an apostle. All these letters that he wrote to these churches, he was pretty much their pastor, so to speak, and, and so he's overseeing all these churches, and he's writing all these churches and, and encouraging them, and some of them got some really whack theology, and because then nobody knew what to do. They didn't have the Bible like we have it today, and, and so Paul's writing them, hey, this is how you need to do it. This is this is the way it's supposed to be. And, and, and so we find that here in, in Ephesus. Um, Paul writes this letter in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. He says, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Let's pray. Jesus. God, renew the calling in our lives today. God, may we reclaim the calling that you have for us. First and foremost, just to follow you, God. God, may we get back to that. May we get back to that, that, that basic foundation of just following you, putting you first, you in the, in the kingdom of God first. Everything else will be added. As we follow you, as we seek you, as we pursue you, in pursuing you, we pursue our calling and the life that you have for us. God, speak to us, renew us today, refresh us, Lord. Remind us, Lord, who we are today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Paul is writing from prison. And he said, as, as a prisoner for serving the Lord, lead a life worthy of your calling. Lead a life, live a life worthy of your calling. Let's sink in for a minute. For all of us today, wherever you're at in your life, however you are living, whatever your focus is on right now, lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. The calling is to God Himself through Jesus. Yes, God has a plan for you. Yes, God has a purpose for you. But it centers and it should center around following Him. Because we can't do it without it. We can try, but we fail. Miserably, by the way. All sinners from around following. And the calling is to God himself. This whole thing, your journey with Jesus, going to church, all that is not just an add-on to the rest of your life. It's not just a re religious obligation. It's not just something you fit into your schedule like we do everything else, like your family and your job and your hobbies and all the other stuff. God is meant to be the focal point of it all, and everything out of that flows from there. That's what 
That's the way it's, it's meant to be. For the calling is to God himself. What happens is when we make it an add-on to everything else, oh man, I'm just too busy, I, I can't make it in church this weekend. Right? But if it's the focal point of our life, not just going to church, I'm talking about pursuing God, if that's the, the focal point of our life, then guess what? Man, I've got to have it. I gotta have church on Sunday. I gotta pray on Monday morning. I gotta, I gotta seek after Him on my lunch break. I can't go without the Word of God today. I need to get my praise on right now. Come on, somebody! If it is the focal point of our life, we don't want to miss it. We don't want to do without it. But if it's just something else that we do, then it's not a big deal if we skip it, or miss it, put it on the back burner because of everything else that's going on. Come on, church, let's rise up. We gotta change that mindset today. We gotta change our heart. God soften our heart today. Humble us, Lord. Humble us today. Let's rise up and change that. It's time to renew your calling today. It's less about what you do, it's more about who you are becoming. So live a life worthy of the call. We're called, we're called by God, not just to go to church. Be the church, to be the people he is calling us to be. Now, I want to know about some of you today. Um, there's an especially complicated climate that we're living in right now. And again, 2020 has been one of those years for the history books, and not in a good way. Right? And, and maybe you might be feeling worn down, maybe physically drained with everything that's going on, emotionally exhausted, maybe even spiritually discouraged. Guess what? If the devil can't destroy you, he will try to discourage you. He'll try to get in your mind, hey, you can't do this, right? Why don't, why don't you just give up? I don't think you can handle this. Can, can you really endure all this that you're looking Is it really worth it? Does it really matter? Do you really matter? So how do we overcome that? That discouragement? How, how, do we, how do we overcome the fatigue and the exhaustion? How do we overcome self-doubts or even the spiritual opposition and keep our passion for the Lord month? After month, day after day, year after year, decade after decade. We've got to keep that why in front of us, that calling in front of us, that calling unto him. Why do you live? Well, in him we have everything that we need. In him we live and move and have our being, right? If we'll keep our why, our purpose, our purpose isn't something. Our purpose is God. So reclaim that today. Reclaim that today. Rise above. And as you follow him, you will rise above anything that comes your way. But many of us, we get so caught up in, what am I called to? God, what's my plan? What's the plan for my life, God? What am I supposed to do? We're, we're, we get so caught up in, in, in that and frustrated. And most people think it's a job. Most people think it's a mission or a particular thing. And it might be. It might be at some point. But guess what? Your why and your purpose is not married to a title. It's not married to a gifting or an ability. It's not married to a particular thing, place, or person. Your why and your purpose is to love God and love others. However that looks in your life. My why, my purpose is not tied to being a pastor. Right? That's not my why and my purpose. It's something God has called me to do in the middle of my pursuit to him. But what's that for you? I don't know. That's something you've got to talk to God about. That's something as you pursue him, he will reveal to you. But if you don't pursue him, you're going to be caught wandering. Just like the Israelites. After they left Egypt, after God delivered them out of Egypt, they were wandering because they were so caught up in their own ways and their old ways, and they didn't pursue God. And they left wandering. Come on, reclaim your calling today. Many times we mess ourselves up because we're chasing and we're worrying after that particular thing or that specific calling. God, God, what is? Are you calling me to Africa? God, are you are you calling me to to this people? God, are you calling me to be a foster parent? God, are you calling? You're telling me to do this thing, God. And young people, you're going to get to a point where it's like, where do I go to college? Or, or, or maybe not college, maybe it's a particular trade or something like that, because that's a thing too. God, what am I supposed to do? 
And who am I supposed to marry? God, what is my life supposed to look like? And we can get so focused and wrapped up in what that is, and we, we, we miss God altogether, which leads us to an even bigger mess. We just call this simply pursue Him, put, put Him first uh, in our life, and however He leads us in that pursuit of Him, however He leads us, we say yes, Lord, to whatever it is that He has to say. But God calls us to him first. Before anything else, God calls us to him first. Many of you gave your life to Christ already. You didn't give your life to him without him prompting you to do that. By the Holy Spirit, right? God calls us to him first. God calls us to salvation first. Before God calls you to a job, before God calls you to a ministry, before God calls you to anything specific, he calls you to himself first. Jesus didn't come to call the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. So he calls you first to come and follow him. And as you pursue him, as you follow him, he calls you to live a particular way. It's called sanctification. Big fancy word for being set apart and called to live a holy life, to live for him. And not ourselves. And as we pursue Him, and as we go along that process of sanctification, then He calls us to service. Many people want to jump in and get that all backwards. Many want to jump in and, hey man, I just, I just, want, to, I just want to do this thing. And we haven't really focused in on who we are in Christ yet. And then, then, then a lot of confusion sets in. Not just for you, but for everybody else. So God calls you to himself in, in salvation and then through sanctification. Then God calls you to service. And as you pursue him, as you are obedient to him, as you say yes to him, he opens doors of opportunity in your life. And he'll use those good things and those talents and those abilities in the church, but not just in the church. So many times we push everybody, hey, get served, get, get involved in the church, and that's important. You should do that. But what about the rest of the world that so desperately needs you to serve them? As well. And it may be a very specific thing. It may not be. But it's more about who you are becoming than what you are doing. Your service, your talents, your giftings, your abilities, they're only going to take you so far. They'll get you in the room. They'll get you the job. They'll get you the promotion. They'll get you the title. They'll get you the ministry. They'll get you whatever it is. Fill in that blank. The recognition, the degree, the certificate. They'll get you there. But, but they're not going to keep you there. It's your character that will keep you there. So we have in Colossians 3, 17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. So whatever it is that you do, whatever kind of job, and you God may not call you to a vocational ministry like a platform or, or something like that. Your ministry might be whatever job you are in right now. As a secretary, as a teacher, as a mechanic, as a, as a bus driver, truck driver, whatever, as a student, whatever it is, wherever you're at is a ministry. And God can use you wherever you're at. You might think, I'm just a parent, I'm just a stay-at-home parent. Well, God's a ministry. And God can use you in that, wherever you are. And we may do everything as unto the Lord. But how do I know if I'm ready? How do I know if I'm enough? How do I know if I'm, I'm good enough? going to be ready. And if we wait till we're ready, we're never going to reach our potential. 1 Corinthians 1, 26, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. This should encourage you and I this morning. How many of the early church leaders, how many of, of these guys, we see Peter and Andrew that, that Jesus called right off the boat. Wow, they're fishing. And Jesus calls them right. right they, 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 they were tradesmen. They, they, they had all these different, uh, these different things. They, they weren't educated, influential people. Like, come on, God can do anything with anything. God can do anything with anybody that is is willing. So don't feel like that. that oh, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't feel like I'm ready. Just be willing. That's all God is looking for. Wherever that you are at. You might feel like I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the purpose. Well, maybe you're not seeing God, and that's the reason you're not seeing the purpose. Wherever you are at, God has called you to. And he doesn't call the prepared. God prepares the call. As you seek him, because he called you to himself first. As you seek him, 
He will speak. He will show you what to do. The Holy Spirit will give you boldness along the way. Call me to himself first. God didn't call me to be a pastor first. He just simply called me to himself. I knew God had something for me. But he never said, you shall be a pastor if one day. Like, you know, like, there was never that, hey, you're going to be a pastor and, and, and lay on that, because first of all, I always said, <laughs> good, good story, God. Good way to go. That was a good joke, you know? Because I was like the shy, I'm still shy. I'm, still, I'm an introvert. If you didn't know that, you probably could tell. But, but I was like the shyest kid there ever was. I would take zeros in class project, guys. I, I, I don't care. Just give me a zero. I'm not getting up in front of the class and talking. Some of you guys are probably like, I'm not getting up in front of the class and talking. <laughs> Take that zero. C's get degrees. Come on. Probably should follow that advice. Teenagers and college students. But it's true. I, I, I was the least, least likely to come up and speak for a living. Right? But I knew. I knew there was, there was a sense. There was, as I sought after God, as I, as I, as I went out, I, I, there was so, I could sense it. There was never a big neon sign. There was never, I never had a, a youth camp experience at the all of oh, God, I've been seen. You know, nothing like that. It was just, there was a sense. I, I knew that there was something more. And as I pursued God, he opened opportunities for me. All I did was just say yes. And it's like that for you and I today. For, for years, as a teenager, I was like, everybody's like, hey, go to college, go to college, go to college. You better go to college. Like, hey, are you going to college? Hey, if you signed up, you're going to college? Like, you don't go back. Right, Mom? <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. And, and part of the reason that I, I didn't pursue that, like, right away, is I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I had, I had no clue, no desires, no, no plan. And, and so I didn't. Pursue that, but at some so, so I just wondered in that time, and, and I think I wondered because I wasn't really getting a hold of God the way He really wanted to get a hold of. And the moment I said, "All right, God, like nothing's happening right now. Like I'm getting older. I'm still single. I'm, 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 I don't have a career. Like if, even if I was dating, I'm not ready to get married. You know, like all right, God, I, I'm getting out of the way." I'll quit being stubborn, quit being hard. <laughs> what do you want to do? And as I did that, the more I surrendered to him, the more I sought after him, the more I pursued him first, because he calls us to him first. Then he said, Alright, let's take this step. Right? So I started leading worship. Started leading worship. As I led worship, he began to say, Alright, hey, he began to stir that stuff up in me even more. I'm like, Alright, hey, we got this out of the way. Now I want you to, to learn how to speak without a guitar in front of you, okay? You know? <laughs> That guitar is the safety now. I want to just step out of that. I just, all right, now it's time to go to school. Let's get, let's get this going. And then he, he just began to open opportunities and, and things as I sought and surrendered to him. Live and lead a life worthy of the calling of just simply seeking after God. Renew that content. Now, in the rest of our time that we have together, I'm going to wrap up real soon. I promise. promise. There's two qualities of calling that I really need to get in you today. And the first is this, and this is really important because I don't want to blindside you with anything. Because many think, okay, we give our life to Christ and everything's going to be perfect, right? No. But God does promise that he will be with us every step of the way, no matter what comes on. So, so here's the calling costs. Calling costs. When, when God called Paul, before we know him as Paul, he was Saul. He was the great persecutor of the church. He was a, a religious leader, very well educated. And he had Christians persecuted, stoned, imprisoned, and killed. And one day he has an encounter with Jesus. And it changed everything. Because that's what Jesus does. Come on, amen. And he changes Paul, Saul's life. We later come to know him. Paul. And in that moment, the Bible tells us that he's blinded for, for, for days, right? He's blinded for days. I believe in that moment, I believe that was a, a moment of humbling Mr. Saul. I believe that was a moment of humbling him. I believe that was that process of sanctification uh, for him. 
And then once he's healed, he goes through this process of these days of, of being one. Once he's healed, guess what doesn't happen? He doesn't build some crazy strong resume. He's not, he's not um, uh, brought out and, 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 and has this huge platform to reach people. People aren't, aren't calling his name. People aren't booking him for, for speaking engagements. The ladies aren't calling for him and seeking after him. Like There's no six-figure uh, income coming in. None of that is happening, right? But in Acts chapter 9, verses 15 and 16, it says, The Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. You might be God's chosen instrument in some context. Again, whether it's a parent, a spouse, a secretary, stay-at-home mom, a uh, mechanic, truck driver, student, whatever that is. You are God's chosen instrument in some context, but it's going to come with a cost. The moment that you step into your calling, you're going to step out of your comfort. It's going to cost you your comfort. It's not going to be easy. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be laughed at. You're going to face spiritual attacks. I know I'm selling this really good for y'all, right? I should be like a salesman. Like, you're like, sign me up for suffering. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, no, none of us do that, do we? But it's going, I want to prepare you. It's going to come. Jesus didn't come and call us to comfort. He's calling, him out of, uh, calling uh, us out of comfort to him. But even though you might be rejected, misunderstood, laughed at, Facing spiritual attacks, guess what? God often uses our deepest pain to launch our greatest calling. So while it might seem difficult, God wants to burn something out of that and make beauty for ashes. Following Jesus is this, this dichotomy that happens. It's, it's this and it's that. Serving Jesus is a gift, but it's also a grind. It's a gift, man. How many of you got saved and Jesus came in and changed your life? And it was, it was the greatest gift you ever experienced in your life and are still experiencing to this day. But it's a grind at times. Living your call is a thrill because you, you feel that purpose and you, 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 you feel fulfilled in your life. It's a thrill, but it's also a burden. It keeps you up at night sometimes. Some sleepless nights and some tears. That are shed. Ministry is exhilarating. Man, I love to see people get their life to Jesus. I love seeing people discover their purpose and begin to take next steps in their walk with the Lord. I love it. It's amazing. We love seeing families come and, 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 and get it. And I love that's that's my favorite thing about me is when the light bulb starts going off. And people start, I love it. It's exhilarating, but it's exhausting. Exhausting. Because relationships take time. Investing in people takes time. I have a pastor friend of mine who I've uh, served under and he's a mentor of mine, but, but he said, man, that's one reason I mow my own grass is because I can see change immediately. Ministry isn't always like that. And, uh, a lot of times it's not like that. It's exhilarating, but it's also exhausting. Following Christ is not easy, but God never promised it would be easy, but he's going to be there every step of the way. Guess what? The biggest enemy of calling is comfort. The biggest enemy of calling is comfort. Never sacrifice your calling on the altar of comfort. Don't compromise it. Don't sacrifice it on the altar of comfort. So, so you're calling it. It's going to cost you, and it might be uncomfortable at times. It might be difficult. It might stretch you more than, than what you think you can handle. But guess what? Your calling sustains. Your calling sustains. It's going to carry you. It's going to keep you. On those days you feel like I can't go anymore, it's going to, to, to push you that why in front of you, pursuing Christ and, and pursuing the things of Him. It's going to push you to, to rise up and to rise above whatever it is that comes your way. It sustains how did Paul endure everything that he did after his conversion to Christ, right? How did, he, how, how did he face Paul? was in prison multiple times, falsely in prison just because he followed Christ. He himself was tortured and stoned, 
was on a ship in a really bad storm going to do ministry and was shipwrecked, got snake bitten. Paul endured great suffering for the cause of Christ. But how did he keep going? Why was he not bitter? Why at some point did he say, you know what, these people, I'm trying to reach them and they're just not getting it, so you know what, I'm done. Why, why, why did he continue to pursue? Why, 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 did, why did he not quit and raise the fight and say, I'm done, God, I can't go on anymore? Why was he so faithful even though he was abandoned at times? Or betrayed or falsely accused wrongly. How, how did he keep going? How did he persevere? Paul didn't finish because he was confident. He was very confident. He finished because he was called. And he understood that. He knew his why. He knew his purpose. It was simply to follow Christ. After everything that Jesus had done in his life. He kept the faith. He said in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on. Someone say press on this morning. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me to a greater degree. For which God has called me a greater title. For which God has called me some greater influence. For which God has called me heavenward in Christ. Jesus. Jesus was his purpose. Jesus was his mission. And that is the same for you and I today. Whatever it is for you, whatever that plan, whatever that purpose, whatever that, that thing that you are supposed to do comes from pursuing Jesus. Comes from pursuing him. Worship team, you guys can come up. This has been such a difficult year. We faced COVID. There's been uh, all the racial uh, issues and challenges that we have faced today have been heightened like never before. The political tension is at an all-time high. It's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. But no matter what you face, no matter what we go through, we are called to live a life worthy of that. We are called to live for Christ because of what he's done, because he died and rose again. We are called to good works in him. After all that Jesus has done, I'm going to run my race. Come on, can you say that this morning? After everything that Jesus has done for you, will you run your race? Come on, church, rise up. Come on, we can't stop. Now's not a time for the church to go to sleep. Now's not a time for the church to, to be comfortable. We can't stop. We can't quit. Come on, we're called to it. Someone say, I'm called to it. We are called to it. What we're seeing in the world right now is not going away anytime soon. It's not going to let up. In fact, it might get worse as we end uh, and go even closer to the end of time. So we have to rise up, church. Paul said it like this, and I hope it encourages some of you today. He said, man, listen, I'm hard pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. So guess what? I'm going to keep going. Whatever's going on in your world today, it might be pressing down on you, but you're not defeated. You're not crushed. He said, I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. I'm struck down, but not destroyed. In other words, hey, Everybody and everything can come against me, but guess what, baby? I am still standing. Could you say that today, church? Maybe 